welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this uh, YouTube video, I'm going to be discussing academic ignorance and stupidity, part 7. <coughs> I'll be looking at the uh, derivative as defined by Cauchy and the derivative as defined in the new calculus. So, in Cauchy's uh, calculus, the derivatives are defined as f dash of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And of course differentials are not well formed in any of Cauchy's calculus or Newton's or Leibniz's calculus. In fact, they're rather mysterious and vague concepts uh, which have puzzled uh, mathematicians the last four or five hundred years, including Newton and Leibniz, who gave birth to these concepts. So, differentials are loosely defined in mainstream calculus as follows. dy is approximately equal to f of x plus h, minus f of x and dx is approximately equal to h and somehow by taking the limiting process of each side so if we take the limiting process here as h goes to zero this thing here really becomes zero but not quite uh, according to mainstream mathematicians and this becomes dy and this becomes dx which are differentials. I could have written this as delta y and delta x using the Leibnizian approach. Now, <coughs> in the new calculus, differentials are well defined. So, let's look at the definition of the new calculus and we'll see that dy is equal to f of x plus n minus f of x minus m and dx is equal to m plus n. To understand this, you'd need to study the first nine lessons of the new calculus, and you'll be able to get a good idea of its machinery and how it works. And then I suppose you could always come back to this video and watch it again. So, uh, these differential differentials here are exactly uh, defined as they should be. There is no approxim approximation as there is here and th you can use these as actual numbers whereas these here are just vague ethereal concepts uh, which are entirely meaningless unless you apply the limiting process and then you have other ill-formed theory and which leads to really weird results in some cases. Now, <coughs> uh, the reason I've actually talked about differentials here is that I want to take a look very quickly at academic ignorance and stupidity the last four or five hundred years. Um, in the beginning, all lines had slope or gradient. So the left hand side here is what the ancient Greeks knew. This incidentally is lesson one of the new calculus and the right hand side is what Newton did. So, in the Greek system of things, every line has a slope. Even the vertical line has a slope. What is the slope of the vertical line? It's 90 degrees. Okay. The way Newton did it, it has no slope. Right. Because the tan ratio, which is the slope as defined by Newton, requires y divided by x. And in this case, x is 0. And of course, we know that anything divided by 0 is meaningless. Right. So, in the Greek definition, <coughs> slope has dimension. What is it? Its dimension is in terms of right angles. In the Newtonian or Leibnizian scheme, slope has no dimension. It is but a ratio, the tan ratio. Uh, in the Greek scheme, all lines have slope, even 90 degrees and 270 degrees, but under the Leibnizian or Newtonian system, there is no slope at 90 degrees or at 
Roman sailing views. The Greeks defined slope in terms of angles. Newton and Leibniz defined slope as rise of the run. Okay, so now what did Newton do? Well, Newton had a bit of a problem. He wanted to find the slope of a tangent line to a particular curve. And so his approach uh, through experimentation really because he didn't he wasn't 100 percent sure of what he was doing uh, just remember that what he accomplished was quite significant uh, given that he had nothing else to build on in terms of uh, differential calculus but what he thought and what he did was not entirely correct and that goes for Leibniz as, and also for Kakaochi who supposedly rigorized the calculus there could not be a bigger lie or farce than that. Calculus was not rigorous until the new calculus, which I invented, rather discovered. So the first and only rigorous formulation of calculus in human history is the new calculus. No rigorous formulation existed before the new calculus. That is now no longer uh, subject to discussion or debate. It is a fact. So what Newton did was he took these secant lines here and try to define the slope of this tangent line by all these non-parallel secants. So whatever Newton did there, and this is this is the definition of the differential in each case, the dy and dx, there was no way to actually turn this back into a slope definition. So for example, to get theta and be able to define the slope of every line, we need the r tan function of dy dx. But under the Newtonian scheme, dy and dx are not defined. They're not defined in any of the mainstream calculus concepts or theorems. There is no separate dy and dx defined as numbers. Thus, you cannot take the arc tan of ty and dx unless you know it as a whole. Okay, so that's the only way you can do it. However, in the new calculus, you can do this particular operation here because all you do is you substitute that value in here and this value in there, and you can find the angle of any line, whether it be vertical or horizontal or at any other inclination uh, whatsoever. So, um, let's just take a quick look again at this applet here, which came out many years ago. Uh, you'll see on the right parabola here what Newton does, and on the left parabola what the new calculus does. Okay, so as we uh, basically decrease in distance, you'll notice that the new calculus derivative is always correct. There's no approximation. We're not guessing. And as we move closer and closer to zero, uh, you'll notice that Newtonian derivative is never accurate. In fact, it's undefined at the point of contact with the curve, which is here at 2, 4. However, the new calculus definition is inaccurate up to the point of contact. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, this is just a special case which works for parabolas. You'd be wrong. It works for any curve. It works for the sine ratios. It works for polynomials. It works for any continuous and smooth curve, also known as differentiable curve. So when you read this, uh, don't imagine that you're smart because in all probability you're more than likely an idiot and you don't understand what you're doing. If you're a mathematics professor, you need to watch this video several times because you're probably not as smart as you think. Okay? So now, if you move this line away, you'll see in every case what happens as you approach the point of tangency. If you hit zero, <laughs> you get a meaningless ratio in the case of mainstream uh, calculus, and that's expected because uh, the morons who designed mainstream calculus try to rigorize it in terms of limits. And of course, limits are absolute rubbish, but the new calculus provides a rigorous and sound formulation. And this is one of the first steps in understanding why the new calculus is better and has many new features and is far more powerful than the mainstream calculus. And so 
in this applet here, you can also see what happens as you slide this uh, this point here on the slide bar. How, what happens to the the gradient or the slope of the tangent line in terms of mainstream calculus? It's always an approximation, never an exact value. In the mainstream calculus, there is an auxiliary equation which gives you the correct value at any particular uh, time or point that you slide this uh, dot on the bar here. So new calculus will always be correct and the, uh, the auxiliary equation is very easy to find. So let's get rid of that applet and also this one and come back here and see what happens if uh, what happens if you have a vertical curve and you're using these concepts? Well, if supposing we had a circle, then at this point here, on the side, there is no gradient according to according to mainstream calculus. Okay, let's assume that, that curve is more or less straight. Okay, that's straight line, and so. At the point of tangency there, there is no gradient in the mainstream calculus. However, there is a gradient in terms of this concept here when we use the new calculus. Well, it's very simple. The new calculus requires that there be a, a parallel secant at the point of tangency. And in this case here, the, the, only, parallel, the only parallel secants are straight lines. Uh, I'm not drawing that straight, so let's, let's just draw another line using the line object. So if I draw a line like that, okay, and then I move that line, this is, these are the only parallel lines, but in each case here, there is no M and N. There can only be one or the other, but not both. In which case, M plus N would be zero for this particular problem that we're looking at. And if you do it that way, what's going to happen is this. We're going to end up with tan of my, tan, the inverse tan of some dy over zero. Immediately we can see that based on the sign of this ratio, it's either going to be 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Okay, But you can't do that with mainstream calculus. In fact, you can't even do normal uh, arctan with mainstream calculus using the derivative unless you know the whole because the differentials are not well defined uh, which however is not the case in new calculus you can do it in any particular instance whether the line is horizontal uh, vertical or any other inclination and so this is basically what I wanted to show you in this particular episode or YouTube video and I hope you'll take some time and study it and learn this uh, knowledge that I've shared for the first time with you with, res with respect to finding the slope of a tangent line at any point on the curve, whether it be horizontal or vertical or any other information. This episode is called Academic Ignorance and Stupidity, Part 7. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.